I'm going to show you how to draw a Lewis diagram using two examples. Suppose you had to find the Lewis diagram for the molecule NH2Cl. To do that, the first thing I'm going to use is a periodic table because this periodic table um, actually shows me the number of valence electrons in each of those atoms. I can do that by looking at the group numbers along the top. I can see that nitrogen is in group 15, so it supplies five valence electrons. I take the last digit. I can see that chlorine is over in group 17, so that means I take the last digit again, so chlorine will supply seven valence electrons. Even though hydrogen is usually shown in the middle there, it's actually considered a part of group one, which means that each hydrogen will supply just one valence electron. I'm gonna keep a note of these numbers after I total them up. So that gives me a total of 14 valence electrons to work with. Step number two is to actually start choosing a central atom. Now the first thing about choosing a central atom is that it's never ever ever going to be hydrogen. So don't put hydrogen in the middle. This means I'm left with the choice of either choosing the nitrogen or the chlorine. If you're left with the choice, you're going to pick the element which is the least electronegative. So we're going to choose nitrogen as our central atom and pop that down and we're going to put the other elements around it. The third thing we're going to do is to create single bonds from the central atom to the outer atom. Each single bond is represented by a line. Each single bond represented by this line also represents two electrons. So out of the 14 electrons we had, we're gonna pull out two electrons at a time to create single bonds. When we do that, you can see that I made three single bonds. So I use six electrons, that brings me down to eight. The next thing I'm gonna do is that I'm just, gonna go, I'm just gonna do a quick count of the number of electrons on each atom right now. I can see that um, chlorine has two electrons. I can see that each of the hydrogens have two electrons. And I can see that the nitrogen, because it's got three bonds around it, has six electrons. The reason I do that is because in this next step, I'm actually going to start placing um, the remaining eight electrons somewhere. To do that, I need to um, place the electrons on the outer elements first and then the central atom. I also need to follow the octet rule, which means that um, everything, every atom should have eight electrons. The exception to that is hydrogen. So hydrogen has two at the moment out of two, so that's actually okay. So I'm gonna start with the chlorine, which means that this chlorine has two, it needs six more. So let's pop in a, another six onto the chlorine and I'm now suddenly left with two electrons. These remaining electrons go on the central atom. These remaining electrons are what gives us our lone pair on the central nitrogen atom. In example number two, I'm gonna show you the Lewis diagram for a molecule such as carbon dioxide. I do the exact same thing as I did in example one. So I'm gonna need my periodic table again, and I'm gonna look for the carbon and the oxygen um, on the periodic table. Carbon's in group 14, so carbon supplies four. Um, oxygen's in group 16, so that supplies six. Remember, when I'm taking the last digit, this gives me a total of 16 valence electrons. After that, I'm gonna choose a central atom. My choice is between the carbon and the oxygen, and carbon is the least electronegative one, so we're gonna put carbon in the middle, and we're gonna put the two oxygens around it. After that, I need to start creating single bonds from the central atom to the outer atom. Remember, I show this by using a single line, which represents two electrons, which represents two electrons being shared, which represents, um, sorry, which means that I need to use two electrons at a time. So when I do that, you can see that I'm creating two single bonds. I just used four out of my 16, so I've got 12 left. After that, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do a quick count of the electrons. Each oxygen has two. The central carbon has four because it's got two single bonds around it and each of those bonds represents two electrons. Now, again, just like before, I need to place the remaining electrons on the outer atoms and then the central atom using the octet rule. So oxygen's got two out of eight, carbon's got four out of eight. So with my 12 remaining, we're gonna place them on the outer atom. So there's oxygen and there's the other oxygen done. This means that I've got no more electrons left, but we've got a problem now because carbon only has four, but it still needs four. This is when you create multiple bonds. To do that, you need to look at the outer atoms and start using pairs of electrons. So two electrons at a time to create new bonds towards the central atom. When I do that and I do my quick recount, each oxygen actually still has eight out of eight, but when I recount on my carbon, I can see that it now has eight out of eight as well.
choose phosphorus, I'm going to plonk that down into the center. My dog just sneezed. Remember, everything's going to follow the octet rule except for hydrogen, which means that when I look at chlorine, and I'm going to start with the outer atoms before the central atom, but when I look at chlorine, there's only two. It needs Hmm, this isn't going to work, eh, hey, Toast? 